aboard our Bento Oceanus Clipper 311. This is the lifting keel version, so when the keel's up, you can go into shallow water or even dry out, um, which is really handy. It also has twin rudders, so when heeled over while sailing, you have actually a great deal of control. In a wee minute, we're going to do a full boat tour. We're going to start outside at the bow and then work our way around. Then we'll go down below, look at the accommodation, and then we'll finish up by looking at the engine and some of the systems on board. So let's grab the camera and we'll get going. So starting up here at the bow, um, we've got our classic bow roller and our four sail currently rolled up. Um, both our sails that are currently on are um, cruising laminates by Kemp. Um, really nice, great condition. I'm not sure exactly how old they are, um, but um, working nicely, that's all I can say. Also at the bow, we've got our um, nav lights at the very front here. Um, and that's got a new LED bulb in it, so a lower voltage, which is always good. And we've got our anchor locker here. Let's open up and have a little look. Um, okay, in here we've got our new Rockner 10 kilo anchor, which is um, really nice. And we've also got 20 meters of chain and then another 20 meters of line. Um, and that works really well. Um, we don't have a windlass, however there is a built section here to put one on, so it wouldn't be a big job to add one if you wanted to, but for this size of anchor it's not too big a chore to pull it up by hand. Okay, um, turning round and working our way back, we've got um, two opening hatches, one for the four um, cabin and This year, 2002, was completely rewired, um, so it's got new nav lights at the top, um, new VHF antenna, and a new PNG wind instrument set up. And we can see the cables coming out at the bottom here onto new ScanStrut um, deck seals, nice and tidy. Um, so all rewired using a tin cable, um, best practice as always. All lines are led aft to the cockpit, so you can pretty much sail single-handed from the cockpit, um, which is really handy if you're out on your own. Um, we have a spinnaker um, halyard here, wiped onto the side. We also have a spinnaker pole, but it's currently not on board. Just having a look around, so you can take it all in. For the running rigging, um, any line that's needed replaced has been replaced this year. Um, on the kicker, all the lines there are new. We've replaced some of the blocks. There's a block there that's new for this year. Um, and on the main sheet, it's a new main sheet. And with two new blocks here as well. Hopefully you can see that in this light. Come on phone. There we are. So they're all new this year, um, which is handy. All the lifelines um, have our plastic cover on them and they have uh, got quick release here at the side. So if you want to make it easier to get on and off, moving kit, dinghies, whatever it might be, on and off, it's um, pretty easy to do so. Um, we've got um, various um, either fills or empties. This is a way of emptying the... Um, the holding tank. Moving aft we've got our main winch and then at the back here we have our um, diesel fill and breather. On the back we've got our um, GPS um, antenna there which is for the one that's down below not the BNG one. At the back we've got uh, a life ring which seems to be attacked by seagulls at the moment. They seem to keep pecking it for some reason, which is really annoying. Um, at the back of the boat, we've got our swim ladder currently up. Um, we've got our 
down light, again LED. We've got our exhaust for the heater, which we'll look at shortly. We have our um, shower, which is cold water only at the back. Well, that should be working, let's just check it. Yeah, working nicely. At the back of the boat, and um, we have four fenders tied, and below that we have the name for the boat, Sula, and our um, aft cabin window on the transom here as well. Um, in terms of safety kit, we've got our um, fro line, for driving round, man overboard sling, and then the handy thing about this boat is our say our swim platform at the back, making it very easy to get on and off dinghies, which is really good. Um, and we have the option of lifting up this back seat, it's hard doing with one hand to be fair. And that locks in nicely, um, closing up the back of the boat. We also have a, a lifeline here that can be hooked over um, to secure the setup. Into the cockpit. And we've got our wheel and our engine controls and compass. We'll have a quick look at that. Under here we've got our plastic cover to keep the worst of the weather off. We've got our Yanmar ignition system. We've got two gauges here, which is our fuel level and engine hours. We've got our um, Raymarine autopilot. We've got a, a belt style um, around the wheel. And then two new things that I've added this year. We've got um, a tact, so we know how hard we're pushing the engine. And we've got a relay for our B&G information here. And if we click through, we can see there's such as the wind speed from the top of the mast, showing us our direction and speed for apparent and true. Loads of information that we can click through here, but I won't go into detail too much on that just now. We've got our compass. We've got our engine controls on the side here. Um, pretty standard stuff, I guess. Um, moving forward, we've got new for this year our um, B&G Vulcan 9. Um, really big fan of these. I should add, both the Vulcan 9 and uh, relay information for B&G are all connected up um, on the NEMA 2000 backbone, so they're sharing information across, which is really nice. Um, under our spray hood here which is a nice size and relatively new. I'm not sure exactly how new it is, but I, it can't be much more than two or three years old. Um, we've got our winches and our lines led aft to the cockpit here, um, such as our main sheet, outhaul, spinnaker line, you get the idea. Nothing particularly outrageous there. Same on the other side, all lines led aft, um, which is really nice. Finally, uh, before we go down below, we've got our um, cockpit storage and our rocky here. We'll open it up and look at a couple of things. It's a little bit of a mess at the moment. Um, so, in the back corner here, we've got two tanks. The white tank with the things sticking at the top is our fuel tank. As far as I can remember off the top of my head, I think that's 70 litres. And then this green tank here is our holding tank for the heads. And um, this year we've added a second method of emptying it. By default, or what comes with the boat is a, a deck pump out, which is fine if you're at a marina. However, if you're not, which I am not, then um, I've actually added a, a manual pump out. So that's this white pickup coming from the tank, going across under my fenders, and then we've got actually a manual pump out option here, um, which is really handy. So you don't need to go into marina to empty your tank, which is a good thing. Um, also under here, we've got our heater. We had an older heater and I replaced it for uh, a new one this year. It does still need a wee bit of tidy up with some of the electrics and we'll get to that very soon. Um, but that makes a big difference in terms of keeping you warm and the boat dry. Um, 
certainly wouldn't want to be without one on the west coast of Scotland. Okay, so that's everything in there. I think we're now ready to go down below and have a look at the accommodation side of things. Okay, let's start go down below then. One of the things we really liked about the boat was how light it was down below. And um, that's really helped by this um, hatch cover that sort of set up that there is. It's actually the, the hatch itself, as you open it up, it kind of goes over this compartment outside the boat, um, which allows a lot of light in, which is really nice. And to really emphasise that, you've got the, the sort of inlaid wooden strips along the roof, which make it feel a bit bigger and quite sporty almost. Right then. So there's a lot to say down here. I think it's easiest if we start in the bow, in our four peak. And here we've actually um, recovered the cushions in here. And there is an overlay. This cushion that's sitting to the side here sits on a board and fills in this entire area. So if you need a bit more room, that's certainly an option. Um, however, for kids, it's actually a great space. Um, as you'd guess, there is um, the window at the top here, and as you'd expect, a small blind as well. To port, you've got a small um, locker, um, and you've also got some sort of cubby areas down below as well, for a bit of storage. Under the bed itself, we've got the water tank, and we've also got our sounder... Um, behind this um, panel here. So that's our depth sounder, speed log and um, temperature. That's our BNG system down below there. So it's actually a really nice space. Hopefully my camera is doing it justice um, in our four peak. Moving aft into the main sort of living area, we've got our table with our classic little bottle holder in there. And the little difference that we have is we have our removable winch handle um, for putting the keel up and down. Now I should add, you don't need the keel down the whole way to sail. You really only need it the whole way down if you're working hard towards the wind. Um, out with that, you don't actually need it down. And you can sail it entirely up because there's still plenty of ballast below the boat. To each side, we have a good grab rail running the length of the interior and plenty of space for storing books and knickknacks and anything else you'd like. As with most boats of this size, you've got space behind the cushions for storage and below here we've also, on both sides, we've got storage for food or whatever else you wish to store. We've recovered, um, everything that you see is blue is recovered by us. However, we haven't got the, the um, aft cabin sorted out yet. But we think the blue makes it look a bit smarter. Um, as you'd expect, leaf tables lift up, making it a, a large enough to dine for comfortably four. If you had to be six in, you really could. Um, on starboard side, we've got one little storage option. Where we keep our first aid kit as well as bits and pieces. On port, we've also got one here, which we often use for storing food because it's near the galley. As we work towards the galley, we have um, our little stove, oven, and grill. To the side here, we've got our sink. And what we've done is we've chosen to have a pressured system. Hot and cold, you can hear the pump kicking in there. And we've also got a filtered option which allows us to have water coming through if we want it there as well. So this is going through a filter which makes it a little bit nicer just to drink if you want to. Especially if you're travelling and filling up in locations where you can't trust the water as much. Across to the side here we've got our fridge. Classic ketchup in there at the moment. We've actually put a new fridge unit in there, this is not the original. 
And when we got the boat, the, the, so the fridge was turning on, it wasn't actually doing anything. So we fitted a new ISO um, um, compressor unit in under here. And that's working really well. And if we turn it up, you can pretty much freeze things that are touching the, the coal plate. Um, while we're under the sink, more storage. And we've got um, the sink outlet and a seacock there. Places to keep our cutlery. And we've still got our... Or most of our um, Benito branded cutlery, which is always fun. Um, behind the galley area, we've got more storage. Again, we've still got our Benito branded plates and stuff like that, which is great. And that's pretty much our galley area there. It's a little bit limited in space, and what we often find we do in for work sort of surface is we might end up using the chart table a little bit, maybe as some of the table as well while we're in here. Across to port, we've got our panel area and our chart table where you store all no your normal gubbins, nothing that radical I guess. And then we've got our main panel, a cable in the way at the moment. Um, we'll look at some of these detail and um, things um, when we look at our systems um, later on in our video. On starboard side. Directly behind uh, we, um, the galley, we've got our heads, and in here it's a wet area, so it's showers, as well as our classic toilet. We've got our new shower head, and below the, or inside the sink, we've got some of our systems, including in here, we've got our um, Jasco sort of bilge pump and shower pump out and behind there um, hopefully you can just about see we've got a brand new um, pressure system for the fresh water and up in here we've even got an accumulator as well so the pump isn't kicking in and out as much um, the accumulator keeps on top of that nicely which works really well so that's in here with our heads nice clean very effective plenty of room for showering all as well um, towards the back of the boat, looking, we've got our galley here that we've looked at already. We've got our steps leading outside, and behind that, obviously, we have our engine, which we'll look at shortly. We have a fire extinguisher, um, obviously pressurized and within date. And then we go back to um, the aft cabin, which initially looks quite small when you first go in the doorway here. We have a little um, wardrobe or rocker, some space for storing clothes. As you start to go in though, you realise it's pretty huge back here. There's our engine, our, our battery switches. In the middle there we can see our heat in from our heater. And a huge area back here which goes right under our cockpit outside. Loads of room and um, once you're lying down anyway. Not so much with headroom but plenty of space to lie down. So rather big back here um, um, a nice place to be once you get used to the lack of headroom. But to be fair for a boat this size it's actually quite a large area. So that's our aft cabin there. And that is inside for accommodation of our Bento 311. Okay, so next we're going to think about looking at our engine and some of the systems. So uh, down here we have our engine which is a Yanmar 2GM20F and two cylinder engine, diesel obviously and pushes the boat along nicely at five and a half knots you can push it a bit harder if you need to um, but that cruises um, nicely at that speed and um, this is the original engine and it's got around about um, 1400 hours on it um, however though we have been careful to ensure it's serviced every year and it's looked after. While I've had the engine it's run very well 
The only one change I have made is I've changed the lift pump for the fuel, the fuel pump, because um, in a previous life the exhaust elbow had been dripping on that and corroded it. Though it was still working, um, I felt it best to change it while I, sh while I could. Back there we've got the raw water strainer. However, the engine is fresh water cooled, so you can see the reservoir there. We have our engine battery here, um, new this year. All batteries were new this year, 2002. And that's our engine there. Um, I should add a very ease of access in terms of chain or tensioning belts. Uh, however, the oil um, dipstick is a little bit awkward to get to around the back there. So with a little bit of practice, you can get, you can sort that out. Um, moving into the aft cabin, we'll look at some of other things. I've opened everything up, moved the cushions out of the way so we can have a good look. Hopefully you can see in this light level. Here we've got our second battery, our house battery, which is a larger AGM battery. I think it's, yeah, it's 100 amp hour. Um, and we have our two engine switches here, so that you can choose which batteries are on. Normally with engines running you'd have both on, so they're charging. Um, when the um, engine, when you're sailing, you might have house on, but you men might turn the battery one off, so you're not burning through your engine battery. Um, and if you're spending the night somewhere, you'll have a battery two on, the house on, and the engine off, so you, again, you're not burning your engine battery, and you can start again in the morning. Um, in the back cabin here, we can see we've got two seacocks. One for our lip seal cooling and one for the actual um, engine intake. The through holes themselves, the scoop through holes, are the only ones that haven't been changed. However, the seacock valve there have been changed. And every other seacock has been changed on this boat this year, 2002. 2022. Yeah, we've got the right year eventually there. Um, right. Down here we can see our new lip seal. And outside the boat, we've also changed um, our bearing, our cutlass bearing is new. And we've also had to put a new prop shaft on this boat this year as well. Um, when we had the engine, our boat inspected, the inspection noted that our prop shaft, the original prop shaft was slightly magnetic. Um, and which means there's a higher chance of it rusting and get becoming pitted. So it was chosen to replace the prop shaft with a higher grade of stainless steel so we know it doesn't become damaged and doesn't start pitting and doesn't start damaging your cutlass bearing or your lip seal down here. So that's all been changed for new and is in good working order. Our engine um, fuel line filter or initial filter is actually below here as well. Um, it might be hard to see, but just behind these two bolts here is our um, primary fuel filter. Okay, so that's looking at some of the systems in terms of mechanics um, and the engine itself. If we go across to the fuse panel now, one of the things we have done this year was looking at the electrics and in particular the navigation system. So here we've got our main panel, we've got our VHF which is the original, we've got a CD player which is relatively old but works fine, we've got an older um, GPS and which isn't connected to the NEMA backbone however it does give you a quick readout when you, if you're down here on the VHF and you need to um, read out a, a position that's really handy to have. Then we've got our main switch panel and then we've added another panel which I added this year with a basic battery readout of our voltage and some of the extra navigation options um, which I wanted to have such as the tricolour light at the top of the mast, our steaming light and our floor deck light. Um, moving this ba back we can have a quick look at, I might need two hands for this, we'll try. We can look at some of the navigate, uh, sort of wiring things we've had to do. Um, 
when we had the boat the electrics were a complete mess so it still looks a little bit untidy at least now everything is labeled so i know exactly what everything is and what everything does um, we've also added um, some blocks in the back here so we've got a negative and a positive so it's very easy to trace wires as well as everything being labeled we've also added up here our NEMA backbone so you can see it is there so we've got various devices which are connected to the network we've got our um, triducer we've got our wind instruments at the top of the mast we've got then our um, plotter our Vulcan 9 and then we've got our relay information as well um, on front of the helm so they're all networked into our NEMA network up there that's our backbone there so we've tidied up all the electrics to make it a lot easier to work and add new devices if you ever need to so not perfect it's a lot better than it was when we um, got the boat Okay, so that gives us a full tool, tour of our engine and some of our systems to get you from more familiar with what we've done with our Bento um, Oceanus 311. Okay, hopefully you found this tour helpful. We'll stop this video now and um, please leave a comment if you found it helpful.